in plus years. Um, yeah, and uh, and uh, without further ado, I want to introduce Krista. So today, really an honor to have her share because uh, and the reason why we mooted this idea for you know for um, Krista to share um, some of the you know the tricks, the drill because it's not easy to, um, you know, as Peter mentioned just now, doing things online are very difficult these days. Even as a company, as a business owner, as the um, anything, right? When the moment something happened, we, uh, when the government announced any CMCO and then we all go back to work from home and then everybody got back into uh, conference calls again and, and, and things just went back to silos. And uh, the, the thing that we realized is like, regardless of what profession you are, it's very difficult getting engagement while doing things online. Uh, be it when you have a school going children or when you have meetings or when you have like events with employees. So um, so I would like um, pass over to Krista for her to, uh, to share the wisdom because she's been amazed at how much forum that she does online like you know, I think months after months after months, I keep seeing uh, a lot of events that she did um, sharing and uh, there are a lot of people participating in her forum as well. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce Krista um, and over to you. Thank you, Mas. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for coming in. Uh, it is it is 6 p.m. It is the end of the workday and many of you are probably tired out. Your brains are uh, really probably not functioning at this hour. So I try to make this as entertaining as I can for you and as fun as I can, okay? Uh, so can I share my screen, Mas? Uh, yes, Ken. Let me, okay. uh, how do I pass on the... Oh, can I just click from here, share screen? Oh, yeah, yeah no. I think you can just share screen. See if that works. Uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe I give you, um, let me see. Yeah. Maybe I need to promote you to, uh, to a presenter. Let me do that. Okay. While she's doing that, let's let's have a, a show of hands. How many of you are already doing your own Facebook Live? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Eric, yes. Anybody else? Zarif? Yeah, uh, Zoom. Zoom counts here. Yeah. yeah. Anything that's live. Basically, anything that's live yeah. when you're speaking okay. and, and you have to host and talk at the same time. Okay. And how many of you feel that you want to do a live? At any point in time, probably probably not tomorrow, but any point in time. Great. Okay. So what I'm going to share is uh, my experience of uh, running, hosting, producing uh, my own Facebook Live sessions uh, ever since MCO started, and it is something that I want to share with all of you because uh, this is something which I feel that a lot of people want to do, but maybe they don't know how to get started and also maybe the tech involved. And what should you think of? What's the before, during, and after process? So that's what I'm going to share with all of you today. So Mas, can I share my screen? Yeah, can. I've already changed the setting uh, for you to be able to share. Are you able to share right now? Uh, okay, let's see. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, can all of you see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about the tech bloopers and lessons learned after 18 Facebook Live sessions. And hello everyone once more. My name is Krista Gun and I'm from Redbox Studio. But I'm doing this presentation for IABC Malaysia because as comms people, or even if you're not comms, uh, we probably would need to do uh, some form of online or live presentation uh, in the coming months, okay, looking at how things are, are going for us in Malaysia. So I want to start with this. These are basically the uh, Facebook live sessions that I have conducted or I've uh, hosted over uh, the last, I think, six, seven months. So as you can see from here, uh, there are a number of people, a number of topics, a number of things that I've spoken about. Uh, and also, as you can see, a lot of it uh, relates to people, what they do, as well as business and marketing. And in a little while, I'll share why uh, I focus on such uh, topics and why I talk to people and why I wanted this to do this uh, during MCO. 
Okay. This is the other part of it. Uh, besides hosting uh, my own sessions, I also appear on other people's uh, Facebook Live sessions. And these are some of the sessions that have appeared in. So, and the one on the bottom right corner is the one that's coming up. So that's why I've added that in. But these are some of the things uh, that I do with other people also. So it's just not me doing it uh, on my own, but I also get uh, invited to share on other people's platforms. Now, before I get started, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Krista and I'm the co-owner of Redbox Studio. What we do is we help micro-entrepreneurs and SME owners grow their reach and revenue using websites that are made for marketing. And at the bottom there, you see that there's the book uh, that I co-wrote with my husband and business partner. These are some of the associations and organizations that I'm with besides running my own business. So uh, as you can see, the butterfly logo is actually a organization called Women Business Sense. That is the Women Entrepreneur Association that I co-founded uh, 14 years ago. Uh, we are still uh, going strong in Penang. Then of course, there's the International Association of Business Communicators in Malaysia uh, that I'm a board member. PWDC, it was what Eric was uh, talking about. It's Penang Women's Development Corporation. I am a director on the board. And of course, there is this, uh, the one on the bottom, which is in the green uh, color, TSN Book Adoption Center, which is a community book project that I uh, started with my husband in our Taman, Taman Sri Nibong in Penang, which has uh, raised more than 150,000 for charity since it started in 2016. Okay, so enough about me. What's in this session? So in this session, I'm gonna share with you uh, three, three main things basically. The tech setup of how to do your own Facebook Live, uh, strategies for live streaming and lessons learned as well as my bloopers, right? Stuff that, that has happened to me while I was doing live. So I think the other thing is if any of you want to stop me and ask a question, please feel free to do so because I think I want to make this session as interactive as I can. I don't want it to be just me talking and then at the end, you probably forget the question that you want to ask. So that's where what I mean by, I hope that you'll participate and ask your questions uh, so that you know, we can all learn together. So now the main thing is why. Why do we want to do this, right? Why do we want to get started on uh, doing our Facebook Live? So in this particular session, I'm talking about Facebook Live because that's what I'm familiar with. So why do we do it? So one of the main reasons why I started doing it when MCO started was because I wanted to uh, give my clients a way of uh, doing something while we were all under lo lockdown. So I have a number of different clients in different industries and we were all probably like sitting at home and even though we were working, but it was still a lot of, there was still a lot of certainty, uncertainty so that uh, I thought that, could I do something? So I thought of this idea, I thought that I wanted to challenge myself to do Facebook Live. At the same time, I wanted to bring along other people with me on this journey. So I sent out an email one day to all my clients and say, hey, would anybody like to come on Facebook Live with me? And you know what? Not many people replied uh, because I know it is quite intimidating. It is not the easiest thing to do. So... The, th the thing for me is I, I think that uh, the, the main thing you have to get very clear is why are you doing it? Whether it's do you're doing it for yourself. I mean, it's always great to always do it with someone or do it for someone, but you must also be very clear on why you're doing it. Uh, because if you're not very clear on the why, and as Simon Sinek says, if you don't know the why, it's very hard to do anything else because there is no purpose, there is no mission to what you're doing. So for me, I think my main purpose was to give my clients a way to get more visibility, to showcase some of the things that they were doing as business owners, but perhaps they didn't know how. So this was my specific platform for them to do that. But along the way, of course, uh, other friends came on board and they said they would like to be part of it. And I would say, yeah, let me, let me see which angle they could come in. So that is where I think that before we even get started, I think the main thing is to know why we are doing it. And if we get our why correct, if we get our why right, 
then everything will be much easier because then you would not have this feeling that maybe you know six episodes down the road you feel okay you've lost your you know lost that that passion for it or you've lost that that excitement for it so what do you do so if you have a very very strong mission you have a very strong why you keep reminding of your, yourself of that particular mission that you want to share, you want to do something with other people. So that was my specific uh, why, to help my clients at the same time to challenge myself to try Facebook Live. Because in the past, I have done it, but it was pretty random and it was not planned at all. So this is pretty much planned. So now let's talk tech, right? So what do you do to uh, go on uh, Facebook Live? Of course, you can just... Uh, go on to your phone and just click, you know, go live, right? But uh, if you are bringing on guests or people that you want to talk to or talk with, uh, I use this particular software called StreamYard, and I'm sure some of you would have uh, heard of this uh, software. So this software is meant for live streaming, and it is very easy because all you need to do is just to log in, and then you give your uh, guests or the person that you're talking to the link and the person just clicks that link and the person's in, okay? So there's no technical stuff to fiddle with, nothing to download, nothing to install. So I think to, to a lot of people, I think um, getting started on Facebook Live, a lot of it has to do with the fear of tech and the fear that the tech will not work on the day that you want to do your Facebook Live. So if you are looking for something that's simple, uh, easy, user-friendly, uh, fuss-free, uh, I recommend that you check out StreamYard. And that is one of the things that I found and which I actually recommended to PWDC to use, by the way. I, I told the team, get started with uh, StreamYard and make sure that you uh, make the best of it, okay? So this is inside uh, StreamYard's uh, dashboard or AKA Studio. So what you see here is, here is that you will have the screen here uh, and then, of course, if you have a guest, then you, you will see your face and your guest face. And on this side, on the right-hand side, you will have the comments that come in, okay? The comments that come in as you are streaming live. So it means that you do not need to look at your phone. You just need to look at this dashboard when you are um, streaming. And the best part about StreamYard is that you can stream to uh, multiple platforms. For me, I stream to Facebook and I stream to YouTube directly. And this uh, makes it very, very easy. I don't have to uh, do all the other stuff. You just connect your uh, social media channels uh, within StreamYard and then you are good to go. So what I like a lot about StreamYard is, as you can see, it's very, uh, like there's nothing really going on in the studio. It's just this interface that is Everything that you want to know, everything you want to see is all here. So there's comments, there's banners, there's brand, there's private chat, which means that you can chat with the people that you're interviewing if you don't want the audience or the crowd to know what's happening. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's basically the tech that you need. So as a host, what I'm doing is when I'm talking to my guests, I have to focus on looking at the camera. At the same time, I have to focus and look at the comments because it is my job to uh, pick out the comments that are interesting and feature them on the screen for my guests uh, to answer, especially if it's a question, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where it gets kind of um, crazy sometimes. And like Neil said, you know, you have to moderate, you have to talk, you have to think. At the same time, you have to make sure your audience is engaged. Mm -hmm. So one of the key things that I do to keep my audience engaged is I call out their names. And I think on live streaming, a lot of people love hearing their own names. So if just say, I see Mas coming in, I say, hi Mas, great of you to join us. Or if I see Malar coming in, I say, hi Malar, glad, glad that you could make it uh, to our session today. So these are some of the things that would help uh, your audience feel that they are part of the show. And I really call it a show because what you're doing is you're putting on a really good performance and I would say a really authentic performance uh, for the people who have decided to spend their one hour with you or half an hour or however long you're streaming. So this is where I think, uh, even though it's kind of strange to be just talking to your laptop, 
uh, where we're streaming, but actually the crowd is out there watching and listening. And I know Alex, Alexandra, she listens, even though it is a Facebook live stream, she actually listens. So in a way it functions like a podcast for her. So that is where uh, it is good for you to keep on reminding yourself that there are people out there watching or listening and to keep the engagement high is sometimes just to bring up that person's comment on the screen or, or to call the person's name out or even ask questions like, uh, where are you from? Uh, let, let us know, are you from Malaysia? Are you from Australia or whichever country that you are from? So this brings really the crowd into that session that you are doing. So to me, that is one of the things that I really like. Of course, you, as you can see here, you can start with StreamYard for free. So you don't have to pay anything, uh, but of course, free and paid versions, they have different features. So I uh, use the paid version because I want to control the branding on the screen. So I want to put my own logo and I want to put certain overlays uh, on the screen. But you can start with free and free is just as good as you know anything because even though you have the StreamYard logo on the top, you still get a lot of the features that they offer. Okay, so the other thing that I would like to talk about is why video, right? So we think that, okay, there's so many different ways to produce content as communicators and why video? And I'm sure many of you already know why video because video is something that people are watching more and more these days. And this is actually uh, something that I pulled up from our own Facebook page. It tells me where my views are coming from. So this is really great data that you can see for yourself, like where people are watching, okay, recommendations, followers, shares. So these are some of the things that we as marketeers, we as communicators would be really happy to know. And video uh, can actually give you that kind of, uh, I would say better, a better kind of interaction if you're doing video. And of course, this is also from our own uh, Facebook page. I can show you that video, our own video versus shared video um, has better engagement. So it means that the average engagement is about 118. Uh, and then the post, uh, sorry, the post clicks are uh, all uh, reactions, comments, post clicks and reach. So you can see that video is much better than a photo versus a status versus a link. So these are some of the things that uh, you should look at uh, when you're doing video to really look at uh, your engagement and reach because I think that's also where Facebook is pushing us towards uh, to make sure that we are using video so that video itself is you know, going to help you grow your, your fan base. So I wanted to share this uh, screen grab uh, of uh, my very first Facebook Live that I did with a good friend, uh, Dr. Vimi. And it was just at the start of MCO. So the title says it all, Reinventing Yourself. And I circled um, the comments and the views to show you that uh, the engagement is really high in that sense, especially if it is something that people want to hear uh, or the speaker is someone who's popular, speaker is someone who's well-known or someone who really has a good following, you really have very high engagement on your Facebook page. And this is another one. This is a recent one that I did and I wanted to pull this up because this was the one that completely flawed me because uh, as you can see, okay, so uh, Ho Sing and I, we were talking about having an exit plan for our businesses, right? So we're, that's the topic of uh, that one hour. But because in that, uh, during halfway during that session, what happened was uh, the internet got really spotty. And when the internet got spotty, see, this is, this is what happened. You know, he started to pixelate and blur. And this is what really happened to me was that after a while, he disappeared from the screen. And to me, that was something really weird because I'm left on the screen by myself and I have to make sure that I keep the crowd uh, engaged until he gets back uh, into this uh, session. So that's why I say that sometimes Facebook Live is 
are unpredictable because of internet. I mean, it's not because he wanted to drop off, but because the internet was really bad or that day something happened, you know, so things happen. So that's why I say sometimes it's funny. It's funny now that I think of it, right? But it was not funny when I had to like, really hold the thought and think, okay, let me just say some stuff while waiting for hosting to come back online. So I just wanted to show this. I, I don't know whether he's uh, here, but if he's here, he can, he can share with you the other side of the story, how he dropped off and came back again. Uh, and this one, uh, if some of you have seen my LinkedIn uh, posting, I was talking about how there was once I was trying to log in to the StreamYard dashboard and I couldn't log in. And the funny thing was my guest was this person, Gina, she logged in already. So she was waiting for me inside the studio. And there I was frantically trying to log in. I don't know why I couldn't log in. There was something weird happening that day. And I, I, I kept getting booted out. And then she texted me, she WhatsApp me, she says, where are you? I'm already in the studio. And I was telling her, okay, don't worry. Let me, let me get this sorted out. I'll log in, hopefully, you know, in a while. So we were supposed to start at 3 p.m. So at 2.50 something, I was still trying to do my logging in. And thankfully, finally, I managed to log in, to log in and managed, we managed to have a good session. But... Uh, after that, I learned that it is good to log in much, much earlier, maybe at least 15 minutes earlier, go in there, have a chat with your guests, you know, make them feel really comfortable, make them feel really relaxed before we press the go live button. Because when we go live, you know, uh, we will start talking. Okay, so this is one of those funny things that happened to me. And it was real and it was strangely uh, unnerving. Uh, you should have seen my face. Uh, I don't know whether some of you can catch it. Maybe you want to go and replay the video. You can see that I had this like, oh my God, why is this happening to me kind of face. Okay, um, this is another one. Uh, I appeared on, uh, I was a guest on someone else's Facebook Live. I wanted to show this also because in terms of the comments, uh, look at the bottom here, 135 comments, 14 shares and 1.4K views. So if this has not convinced you that video is actually the next thing that you should be doing, I hope that after today's session, you will seriously consider video. Whether it is, well, I hope it is live video because that's the whole point of my presentation today. But even if it's not a live video, start with some, some form of video. Because video is really going to help you get visibility. It's going to help you communicate better as a communicator and help you reach out to the audience that you want to reach out to. So strategies for live streaming. Um, so for me, I think uh, what you should do, or for me, actually, I should do is that what I do is I stream to both Facebook and YouTube. And the reason is, uh, even though I have already a copy uh, on Facebook, I want to have a backup. So my backup is actually in YouTube. And the other reason why I'm using YouTube is YouTube is great for search engine purposes. So if you have a video or anything that you already have on Facebook, uh, please always upload it to YouTube so that you can get a lot of the other kinds of visibility from YouTube itself. Because YouTube itself, as you know, it is a search engine. People search for all kinds of things on YouTube. So in the past, what I used to do was I used to, uh, download the video after I streamed it, download it from StreamYard and re-upload to YouTube. And after a while I thought, that's kind of silly because I'm wasting a lot of time downloading, uploading again, right? So why don't I just stream that directly? So what I'm doing is the moment I'm streaming on Facebook uh, using StreamYard, I'm also simultaneously streaming to YouTube. So after the uh, session is completed, I log back into YouTube, my account, to tidy up uh, some of the description, the keywords, and all those things to describe the video. And that's it, I'm done. So I don't have to uh, fiddle with all the downloading, uploading again, and it's already there, okay? And of course, the second thing I always uh, remind myself also is to make sure your setup is good, right? Your setting is good. So this, are, this means two things, your elevation and your light. Elevation means 
elevate your laptop uh, so that the camera is facing uh, your forehead, at least your eye level. So when you're looking, you're looking at your uh, camera at eye level and make sure you have lighting. Make sure you have light that's in front of your face rather than behind you. I know this is pretty obvious, but sometimes we are in a dark room or we are streaming at night. We may not you know, notice that our lighting is not good, but whatever it is, go and get yourself. You know, those, these days it's very, very popular. Just go to any shop and you can get a ring light of very, very reasonable prices, maybe between 80 to 150 ringgit. Get that uh, ring light station in front of you so that when you are streaming, your face looks bright because nothing wounds it like a, you know, a face with plenty of shadows and all that. And it don't look good anyway. So this is not only for you, but also if you're talking to a guest, please make sure that your guest also has this kind of a setup. And of course, stick to a team and a schedule. So my team is um, entrepreneurship, leadership, and marketing. So whenever I invite people to be on my Facebook Live, uh, I want to make sure that they fit into any of these three areas that I want to talk about. And that is where a lot of the prep comes in, which means that I need to talk to them beforehand to find out if they can really talk about certain areas that I want them to talk about. And schedule. Um, in the beginning, when I first started, I didn't, I didn't have a schedule. I just thought, okay, I'll do it whenever I felt like I wanted to do it. But it's not good at all, especially for your audience, because they are really uh, hoping to hear from you. So it's good to stick to a schedule. It's good to tell them when you'll be streaming. So my uh, shows come up every two weeks. So that's uh, streaming twice a month. So every two weeks, I would have... Uh, a guest on and I will announce it on our Facebook page. And then think like a show producer. So what it means here is that um, think of the ways that you want not just to produce um, a Facebook live session that benefits you and your guests, but also benefits the people who are watching. And this would probably come back to that question, right? What is it in for them? So that's why when some of you came in earlier, I asked, right, what brought you in here? Like, what was the thing that you wanted to know or wanted to find out? And some of you have some had some very interesting answers. And I think if you have this idea that you're going to create something for others to benefit from or to have good value for people, I think most of the time people will be very, very happy to show up and to share or to participate or to even be there to show more support, you know, or you want to ask questions because what we want to do is we want to create a, a, a space for people to come in to ask their questions. And because it's Facebook Live, right? They can ask questions and they can get an immediate answer. So if you think like a show producer, you are someone who is going to really, really, uh, think of what your audience wants first before your own wants and needs. And of course, interact and engage. So like I mentioned before, interact and engage means from time to time, uh, sometimes you, you kind of forget this because you're talking to your guests, right? You're so engaged with the conversation. But once in a while, you have to pause or stop your guests and say, hey, can we take some questions? Or can we see what questions are coming out, what comments? It may not be a question. It may even be just a comment, an interesting comment or even a controversial comment. doesn't matter. Pull the comment up and talk about that. And the person who left that comment will feel like a million dollars because you gave that person that spotlight. You gave that person that five seconds or 10 seconds, you know, by calling that person's name out. So engagement is also something that I learned uh, because don't forget, when you are uh, doing your Facebook Live, it is live, but after that, people can watch it as a replay. So this one, I have to keep reminding myself also that uh, I have to remind myself that people do watch the replay. So I have to sometimes tell myself, okay, I have to welcome the people who are watching the replay in my Facebook Live that is happening so that when the people do watch the replay, uh, at, uh, maybe, you know, in the next uh, three hours from now, they will still feel that they are part of that particular show, even though the show has ended. 
So this, this takes some getting used to because don't forget, your video does live on. So your video doesn't just end abruptly like that, right? Your video lives on until you decide to take it down. So my lessons learned. Uh, Krista, if I can yeah. uh, interrupt for a bit, there are questions on the chat. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, Vimi uh, wanted to you to share your quick tips on tricks to manage the situation when things go as planned. Is that correct, Vimi? That question. Okay. So when things don't go as planned. Okay. That, don't that's... go as planned. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes that happens. Uh, so. One of the things that I try to do is I try to think of something uh, that can be interesting for the audience. Like maybe I look at the comments that are coming up and I try to pull up, you know, some of the comments or something that, that uh, I feel that people would maybe uh, want to know about or even a question. So I, I try to put in things like that, like, um, how should I say, uh, like an intermission. So while I'm trying to get things uh, back on track again, so that can be a good, to me, that can be a good way. So that's my experience, right? Sometimes I say, hey, can we stop here? Or, you know, or when things don't go the way I think this conversation should be going, maybe I, I pull up a quote or a comment, a question from the audience. Or maybe I would also interject and ask a question uh, from my list of questions. Uh, so I think, yeah. So sorry, Mas, because uh, I can only see my screen, so I, I try not That's to get okay. distracted. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Uh, okay, so uh, so Christy also has some tips, like best to have someone else behind the scene helping on the tech side. Yeah. So do you have someone? No. On? No. I, I I want to manage it myself. I'm just. <laughs> I want to manage it myself because I want to, I want to I don't know I feel like I want to uh, have a handle on different things so I manage it myself and that's why that's why I, I use StreamYard because for me StreamYard is one of the easiest ways for me to actually manage it on my own and I, and I like that and maybe maybe that's just me maybe some people would like someone to help them with it but for me I really like to manage uh, as I go and I learn uh, as I go along but that's a great tip anyway if you have uh, mm a person to help you, that's great. All right. Okay, any other questions Thanks. before I continue? Uh, there are no other questions, but Ho Seng say like on the, you know, the projector field, Mas, you wanted Mas. to show a slideshow. Mas, I yes? have a question for Krista. The stream yet, does it pull uh, the chats? Because when you stream in Facebook Live, people can leave comments over there. So how, yeah. how does that work? Does it pull all together into the single platform in StreamYard? Or... Yes, yes. Okay. So if you have, just say if I stream to Facebook and YouTube, and if someone's watching on YouTube, just say and leaves a comment, mm -hmm. uh, I will see all the comments. Okay, all the comments nice. that come in. Yeah. So it means that you don't have to go crazy figuring out, like, okay, did a comment come in through YouTube or not? So you can control everything. So that's why, that's why it's good to have a streaming platform uh, software, I would say streaming mm -hmm. software. Yeah. Because we were using WhatsApp on another channel, <laughs> trying to prompt uh, each other during the session somehow. So yeah. you can imagine having chat screens plus uh, WhatsApp. So uh, yeah, that's a yeah. bit, yeah. Yeah, it's distracting like, actually because the, yeah. when I'm, okay, when I'm doing my Facebook Live, I don't really look at my WhatsApp. So if ever, anyone tries to contact me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can be very, I can be very rude. I can turn it to do not disturb so that mm -hmm. I can focus fully. Yeah. Uh, but that's the beauty of uh, StreamYard because on the site, like I showed just now, there's a private chat. So private chat means you and your guests or you are the, and the people who are in that studio can actually talk in private even when you are doing it live. I mean, when live is happening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, let me All continue right. with the last few okay. bullet points. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So the lessons learned is anything can happen. And that's the fun part. I mean, I used to think that it was like a horror movie, right? Halloween kind of thing. But, well, roll with it. I always tell myself, I think part of it is that uh, you learn how to deal with the strange things that happen. And you just, and, and the good thing. Okay, now, now I come to the part where I want to do uh, talk about is that if you're streaming on Facebook, you're usually among friends and people that you know or people who know you. So I always say this, people who know you, they're a lot more forgiving. You know, they're not going to criticize you that badly. Or they're not going to, you know, say something nasty. So, and they're so supportive. I remember the first time when I had with Vimi, where we had this echo problem. 
happening and you know my audience could hear the echoes in their ears or you know coming out from their laptop is that so many of them were trying to help us fix the problem when we were on live so this is the best thing it's like all our friends were trying to say hey can you try this hey could you do this maybe it was this maybe you need to log on and log off lock off and lock on again you know so that itself it's engagement to me i think that that was the a good thing um and of course never over script i think initially when i first started i i wanted to control a lot of things but because life is like that you can't control everything in life so you don't to me i don't over script in these days i would just in the past i used to have like 15 questions uh just to be sure right as a backup in case you know um nobody asks questions and all that but you know knowing your crowd also helps so they will ask questions sooner or later when it get warmed up but uh, these days i don't over script it i will just give myself maybe 5 to 7 questions that i want to ask but if i don't ask them all it's okay because my job is not to get all my answers my job is to let my speaker or my guest uh share what they know so sometimes the conversation goes you know to uh down another path and that's fine so that's where the third bullet comes in listen to your guests so this is really hard when you're trying to manage uh as a moderator as a host and producing the show while trying to listen to the uh, guests and trying to make sure that yes i have to listen to this person talk and at the same time uh trying to think okay what's the next question that i want to ask what's the next thing that i want to do so that takes some getting used to uh but to me now i just listen to my guests because through my guests um, response i get the next question uh i i don't feel so hung up on like oh i must ask all my 10 questions or five questions i i don't do that anymore i just like go with the flow and see what comes up or even sometimes the the participants or the guests or the people watching have a more interesting question than than me so i will take those questions and let my guests answer those questions which is far more exciting anyway uh and of course promote if you don't promote it no one knows uh what's coming up what session what episode and what's the interesting thing or interesting person that you have on your show so sometimes uh this is a two way thing yeah so if i if i have a guest I make sure my guests also promote so I give my guests all the needed uh flyers and promotional materials way way ahead maybe a week ahead of schedule and so that that person can put it on their Instagram put it on their Facebook put it on their LinkedIn and that helps uh create more uh, visibility and exposure for the event I'm having great one great tip that I learned and this I learned from Mala okay Mala goes on LinkedIn and Mala tax all the friends that she feels would benefit from that particular event a particular uh, facebook live or whatever that she's promoting at that, at that time so i think that's a great thing to do because if your friends don't know they can't come to support you and all of you here are basically either friends of friends or my friends so i have tagged you and you decided to come and join us uh, in this particular sharing session so thank you so much and of course over prepare over prepare doesn't mean to over uh, to like you know like do a lot of um how should i say all the questions that you want to ask but over prepare means do all the research you can on your guests uh the topic that you want to talk about so that even if you lost all your notes that day you can still um uh, have a good uh session with your guests so i'm talking in the sense of like Uh, I have to research uh, my guests uh, what topic they're going to present but at the same time I need to know some background information so that uh there will be times where I need to ask certain things because my audience doesn't know everything so I will have to act like the person who knows something but not everything so that I don't spoil it for them so I will ask certain questions that allow them to to know a little bit more about the guests and to make the guests shine okay so that's the end so My uh challenge for you is to sign up for a free StreamYard account and commit to doing a live stream this month. Just try it, okay? So I mean, this is something that I feel that every time you listen to something, I always feel I have to take an action. If I take an action, I will get over that fear. If I can get over that fear, I can do something. You know, better next month or the month after. 
So uh, anybody wants to contact me, have any more questions, feel free to uh, write to me. You can find me um, at these places. You can find me at email and my website, as well as you can scan that uh, QR code if you want to uh, go directly, okay? Mm, Krista, so, I wanted to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you do you promote um, using Facebook ads for your live videos? Nope, I don't. Or is it just rely on your network? Okay. I rely on my network. Mm, yeah, because it's yeah. it would be expensive to promote every time you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. But to me, I think a lot of times uh, why I'm uh, I go back to my why is that I want visibility. I want people to know my brand. I want people to know what my guest is doing. So. It, it works out because they de- get to tag their friends. They get to tag their contacts and, and people they know. So we, we, we grow, in a way, I can say we grow our reach organically. Uh, but uh, yeah, in a way that... Uh, yeah, I think you get quality quality audience from there because um, you you get people who are genuinely interested because from Facebook promo, um, promotions can be... You, sometimes you get a random audience, Yeah, I find. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, that's my presentation. I wanted to uh, to ask. Hi, hi. I see so many people who have come in, <laughs> and I was presenting. So sorry. I was just staring at my, staring at my screen, trying to remember the stuff I wanted to say. So any questions? And before we get to question, I wanted to uh to welcome two person that joined us just now. I think Vimi was on the line earlier. Uh, mm. I'm not sure that she left already, Dr. Vimi. I think she was cheering on when uh, Krista was presenting. Um, I think, and then we have uh, Hoseng as well, right? Attesting yes, to all Hoseng. the... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Hoseng. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think he, should come, he should come and share his other story. Oh my God, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a continuation after this, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, anybody else have any other question for Krista? I think what she has shared was impressive, very impressive. Like you know, I managed to catch one or two of her session, but like eighteen Facebook Live. That's very intense. Um, yeah. Anybody else have anything else you want to know um, in details, or you can ask here or contact Krista later. Yeah. Actually, I would like to know, Krista. Is there any kind of content you wouldn't recommend for Facebook Live? or would recommend for Facebook Live. So I know that the, the people who want to go on who can talk for two hours don't go on Facebook Live. <laughs> but any other tips? Um, well, I guess the content is more of like uh, who you're talking to, right? I mean, if you're talking to an audience that's, that would love you to talk for two hours, I mean, you can hang out for two hours online. It's, it's fine. But I think for me, uh, I think one hour is the max. Uh, some people do it only for half an hour, which I feel half an hour is a little short because by the time people log on 10 minutes later, the session's already finished, completed. So one hour is still doable in the sense that uh, a lot of people think one hour is long, but when you're having a really great conversation, and I'm sure Hosen can attest to that, right? The hour just goes by. Uh, it's only when, I guess, when either the guest is not cooperative, doesn't talk, or the guest just doesn't want to answer, give monosyllabic answers like yes, no, you know, that is hard. But that's, that's where the prep comes in, right? That's where you kind of, before the actual Facebook Live, you kind of like talk to the person for an hour. This is offline before anything happens so that you can, I, I, so that I can bring out the topic that you want to talk about. And the topic is also something that I want my audience to listen to. So there's a, a synchronicity in that. So that at least I'm just the, the medium that brings it all together. Cool. And, and thanks for sharing all that insight, uh, Krista. Yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay. So Janet has a question. Uh, Janet, do you want to speak up? Um, it's not really a question. Uh, but I want to thank Krista because uh, she actually given me this encouragement to start a video or maybe a Facebook. I've been dreaming of doing it. Uh, I've been thinking and thinking and thinking, hesitating, hesitating for um, quite several months. So uh, I did one video, short video, uh, through Powtoon. I find it very interesting, but I was thinking, why through Powtoon instead of my, me doing live? So Krista, I'll contact you next week. Once you enter CMCO, but I have, I think I, I have more time then so I let I'll contact you then. 
Yeah, I, I, I let me, let me just share. Let me just share. Thanks, Janet, for that comment. Let me just share yeah. this. A lot of us doesn't matter where we are in our career journey, business, right? We all feel freaked out when we have to share on video. I mean, honest, right? Honest to goodness. I mean, I was like, oh my god, it's video, and not only is video, it's video and it's live. Okay, all your crazy stuff that you say or you shouldn't have said all gets recorded on video and you can't go back. You can go back and edit that later, but when okay. you say it, it's already out there, right? Mm-hmm. So people have this fear of not being perfect. And I'm, I'm like that. I think I remember the last video I did was last year and that was an Instagram uh, video thingy, but they were so unscripted, right? Uh, but the thing is that we all have this fear of looking at ourselves on video. We're so afraid of that. Number two is we're so afraid of saying the wrong thing. So I think if you just let yourself enjoy the process uh, of just having, a, that's why I call it conversations, because having a conversation with uh, people that you know and you like and you trust makes that a much easier way to get started rather than think of, oh my God, how do I look on video? Oh my God, <laughs> do, you know, do I, do I sound right? Do I look right? I mean, all of us have it, men or women, right? We all feel this, this innate fear of video. But if you can get started, like me, I can, I can tell you this. After uh, doing it for so long, I feel a lot more confident now. Now I, I don't feel like, oh, you know, it's video. I just say, okay, it's time for me to do my Facebook Live episode next week. The one that's coming up is on Deepavali. And I say, yeah, I'm just going to do it. So, and these days I have to coach my, my guests to say, hey, it's okay, you know. It's fine. It's just imagine just two of us talking, even though of course out there tons of people are watching and watching the replay. But yeah, we live we live in there. Actually, actually, I'm I I'm kind of fascinated with Marisa how she how she um how she how she uh how long, how she pro, I mean how she project herself in front of the of the video of the camera. You know, she's like so energetic and and, and so lively. So I said, wow. <laughs> I said. I don't know. I don't. I think how long to do that. <laughs> yeah, but but I always say say this like, Be true to yourself like, Be who you are on on screen and off screen. Um, if you're not that person, you can't. You know, I I can't I can't oh, be Marissa, all right? I can't be Marissa because Marissa is Marissa. I can just be me. So bring your most unique self to video, and mm-hmm. people will like you. I mean, if you have friends around, people already like you. It's just that now you're bringing yourself on video and people mm. need to see you on video. Still the mm. same you, but maybe you a little bit more uh, enhanced. I wouldn't say dramatic, like I would say enhanced in a, in a good way. <laughs> okay. But yeah. The okay. other thing before I forget, uh, can we do a group photo or something like that? Can people switch on their videos? That'll be, I don't know, people uh, may just drop off. Earlier on, we have more people here. Uh, we can uh, fix your hair now, everyone. Not videos. <laughs> uh, Krista, are you going to take it or you need my help with that? And we have Muller. The expert? Yeah, Muller expert. Okay. Can you do it, Muller? <laughs> Count of three. Oh, hello, Janet's daughter, is it? Hello. <laughs> my youngest daughter. Okay, she was oh, in My youngest Hi. daughter. Yeah. Hello. Okay, Hello. Okay, okay, count of three, okay? One, two, three. Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! All right, thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay I got to go. Uh, see you, ladies. Thank you for having me. All right, bye. Thank you, Janet. Bye. bye. Thank you, bye. Okay. So, uh, so we are already five minutes past our time. And uh, I wanted to thank Krista, especially for... Um, for very insightful sharing today. Uh, if anybody have any other question, feel free to reach out to, um, you know, to us or to directly to Krista. She shared her uh, contact just now. Uh, and just to let everybody know, I Comms connect me every, you know, Thursday of the month. Once a month, we will do it at the same time. Uh, and, and actually, this is the first time we experimented with like having a topic because all along this has just been like a you know a place for us to network and connect, and it's so good to see so many new faces that came in to either support or um, you know to come and join and learn because that's what IBC is all about. Although initially we did say that this is actually for communication practitioners, but um, 
we realize there's a lot of people who need help with a lot of things related to communication and it's not just limited to anyone who's actually in the communication profession right now i think especially as entrepreneur everybody has to do everything so i think um really glad to see everybody come forward to this forum so um thank you so much and um hope to see you all again next time and feel free to connect with us on linkedin or um you know on facebook uh, we do have linkedin and facebook yep all right have a good day everyone